Guys, what's up? My name's Swords, and today I'm going to be sharing 7 tips to help make you a better player in the newest free battle royale game, Blood Hunt. And if you don't know what Blood Hunt is, it's a game where you play as your own customizable vampire with awesome powers to take out other enemy vampires in the beautiful city of Prague, either solo or with the squad in the Vampire the Masquerade's universe. Spawn somewhere in the city at the beginning of a match to find loot like guns and swords, mortals to feed on that give you buffs enhancing your powers or skills, and other players to fight and take out to become even stronger. As each match continues, you've got to avoid the red gas slowly pushing everyone into a final zone leading to a crazy final fight, be the last vampire standing to win. For our first tip to becoming a really strong player, you're going to want to pick a class that naturally fits your playstyle best. In the current early access version of the game, there are 6 archetypes to pick from. Each of these classes offers something unique and a new way to play the game. Between these 6 classes, 3 of them share a particular clan and that clan offers a unique movement ability. However, each class has a different passive and class ability. If you want to learn about all the powers and abilities for each of these classes or need a refresher, please check out my video for Blood Hunt about all the vampire powers explained first. Then make sure to come back to this video, it'll really help you out if you don't know all the powers. Once you've understood what each of the powers do for each of the classes, it'll help you in deciding which type of vampire you'd play best with as well as how to play against enemy vampires. Trust and believe there is counterplay between some of these roles, but I'll get to that in another video. And be sure to customize your look because you'll feel more connected with your character and who doesn't want to look cool. Let's have a conversation about mobility. Mobility is going to be your best friend in this game. Trust and believe that mobility will help you be aggressive and survive against the most aggressive players, causing you to survive against the most challenging pushes and scenarios. In Blood Hunt, you can climb buildings, but you can also slide down them too. And if you jump while sliding down them, you pick up a movement boost, and if you can maintain that momentum, you might even build enough speed to cross massive gaps between buildings. Slide down slopes, jump off walls, and use your clan ability to help build up your momentum and keep up your speed. Stay on the move, players that lack movement skills are easy pickings for stronger players. The better your movement, the harder target you're going to be, and the easier it's going to be for you to get out of bad situations and find yourself a mortar to feed on to fill up your health or recover on your own with meds. Your movement is your survival. Also, if you've been following this video so far, do me a solid and please like and subscribe. Most people don't. Trust me, I know. 85% of my audience actually isn't subscribed. So if you like this video and subscribe, it lets me know to keep pushing the content. And while you're at it, coming out with me on Twitch where I like to talk to my awesome community. We've got a kick awesome Discord with some super positive people. Check out the links in the description. Now the next tip's a big one. In fact, you really want to pay attention because understanding resonance in this game is going to separate you from average players. Resonance is a major mechanic in Blood Hunt that gives you specific buffs that make you stronger and affect your gameplay. You must consume the blood of a specific NPC with a particular resonance to get the buff that their resonance provides. By using your heightened senses to scan your surroundings, you can identify a mortal's resonance by their color. There are three tiers to each type of resonance. Feeding on a mortar with resonance will add a tier with additional tiers, making that buff stronger. But after tier 3, consuming the same resonance is just normal blood. Let's go over each of the different types of resonances first so that you understand the different potential buffs that they offer to help make you stronger. Phlegmatic resonance is represented by mortals with this color and it reduces the cooldown to your specific class's ability. Tier 1 reduces it by 10%, Tier 2 reduces it by 25%, and Tier 3 reduces it by 50%. Melancholic resonance is my favorite and it's represented by this color and it reduces the cooldown to your clan ability. Tier 1 reduces it by 10%, Tier 2 reduces it by 25%, and Tier 3 reduces it by 50%. Remember, this affects the cooldown to your movement ability, so feeding on this resonance is going to help your mobility a lot, and you're going to be able to use it a lot more. Sanguine resonance is also just as important, and it's represented by this color. Now, I personally think this resonance is going to be really, really strong in the state of the game because it gives you health regeneration. Without it, you don't get any health regen unless you use a blood syringe. Tier 1 gives you 0.5% health regen per second, Tier 2 gives you 1.5% health regen per second, and Tier 3 gives you 3% health regen per second. Think about that. That is active health regeneration whether you're in combat or not. That is literally the difference between life and death. Keep an eye out for this one. And then there is choleric resonance. 
which looks like this color. And for my melee experts, it offers increased melee damage. At tier one, it gives you 10% increased melee damage. At tier two, it gives you 25% increased melee damage. And at tier three, it gives you 50% increased melee damage. That's a hard hitting sword that can deal a ton of damage. So don't sleep on this one either. And I'm starting to respect melee weapons a ton too. So keep your eyes out for this and keep your eyes out for melee weapons. After consuming three tiers of any type of resonance, you'll no longer be able to add any more tiers of any type of resonance to your vampire unless you diablerize or feed on another enemy player. In other words, for each time you diablerize or finish another player, you can also add another tier of any resonance to your vampire. So if you play super aggressive and finish players, you can mix and mash different combinations of resonance to give you really good buffs, like a short cooldown on your movement ability and health regen. Just think about all the different types of buffs you can apply to your vampire by finishing players. This I think is a really strong playstyle. Personally, I think Melancholic and Sanguine are the best resonances in the game. Now since we're talking about vampire abilities, my next tip is avoid breaking the masquerade. The masquerade is essentially a doctrine of laws vampires created to avoid their existence being exposed to humans and breaking it will cause you to be blood hunted. What it means to be blood hunted is to be constantly exposed on enemy players minimaps, compass and for everyone to see your outline through walls. It sucks to be blood hunted because... <laughs> It sucks. It sucks to be blood hunted because it's going to make it a lot harder to surprise players and you're going to be everyone's biggest target most of the time. So don't do supernatural things in front of mortals like using your powers or feeding while they're in view. To know if a mortal sees you or not, you'll see an awareness icon like this above their heads. As far as healing goes, blood bags refill a ton of health, blood syringes refill health over time, gas grenades make you resistant to the storm for a brief period, and armor is a necessity. It adds 50 additional health. So always pick it up and apply it when you can. Feeding on NPCs or diablerizing players also instantly refills your health as well. Keep in mind you can also slide while healing or even fall while healing which is a great movement tech when rushing out of a fight and trying to heal. Make sure to hold crouch when falling so that when you reach the ground you can slide and heal. Otherwise if you hit the ground hard it will cancel the heal forcing you to start over and waste your time. Now this next tip is going to make blood hunt pretty easy for you if you follow this playstyle. You should first focus on finding your loot which is going to be weapons and meds. Weapons are very important because your starting gun is super weak and you're going to get mowed down by someone else that found an AK before you. Then you want to focus on finding your buffs after you've got your loot, which is your resonance. After finding your desired buffs, look around and focus on hunting players so you can diablerize them allowing you to find more buffs or resonances and become even stronger. Utilize the high ground but listen out for players climbing buildings because they can and will surprise you. You're going to be going from rooftops to street level very often. Look out for tunnels, alleys, and patios because they're going to be your friend in losing players when you need to get away and heal. I'd love to tell you which type of weapons to use and how to use them, but I'm thinking I'll save that for another video. For my final tip, I want to talk about loot spawns. Police vans will almost always carry armor, so look out for them. They stand out quite easy. Ambulances will always carry blood bags and blood syringes. The most important tip here is that legendary chests always spawn in the same place, at least at this state of the game right now, which can be a good or a bad thing, because players know this too. So get your legendary Uzis and get your legendary AKs because they are good weapons and they will take out your enemies. Those are my tips, but what are yours? Comment below my fellow kindred and I'll take a look to browse through the comments. Go check out one of my other videos too. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and peace out.